Welcome to the next lesson. In this lesson, we are going to be talking about speed profiles. So what are speed profiles? As I mentioned in most of the earlier classes, there's a relationship between the travel speed and the horizontal curve. And this is shown in this um, relationship that you're seeing, um, where you find that as the radius increases, um, the speed increases. And a number of studies were done to establish this relationship and most of the time they were using normal vehicles, that is to say normal passenger cars to establish this relationship. So what should you know when you're designing the roundabout? What this speed relationship does is that it normally provides a predictable way of determining um, the different radius. You can easily predict the left turn and the through movements and the circulating speed. So once you know the radius, based on these studies, uh, they developed a formula that helps you estimate the speed. Most of the time this method does not include effects of deacceleration. So for example, you have situations where by deaccelerating and accelerating. And you shall find that it could over predict the entry and exit path curves, where in case the curve radius is high. And I've seen people do studies whereby they wanted to estimate, they wanted to determine is this entry path radius really accurate? Um, the circulating and the exit, the R1, R2, R3. So they kept driving around the roundabout um, to try and see. And they found out that their speeds were a bit not expected because drivers can break as they come towards the roundabout. Uh, what was the expected anticipated R1, R2, R3 could be actually much less in actual speeds. But the good thing, it's just a very good starting point and an estimate. I'm not going to go into the details for this. I mean, this I don't want to make this a boring lecture. But in Excel, what we're doing is you can further improve this speed relationship that you've gotten to kind of estimate this even further more in case you want to do that. V3, again, you can do this. This is just to help you refine the speed further more so that you have something that's much more accurate. So as I mentioned earlier, the main goal behind this is make sure you have consistency between V1, V2, V3, V4, V5. It should be speed consistency. And this is what we talked about earlier. There shouldn't be a huge difference. So you should have a difference of roughly 10 to 15 miles per hour or 15 to 25 kilometers per hour. So if you're coming in at 40 kilometers per hour, make sure you step down at least by a speed of 15 to 25 kilometers per hour. That is to say around 25 kilometers per hour at least. We've talked about uh, improving vehicle speeds. These are improved further by increasing the radius or reducing the radius to ensure that we have speed consistency. At multi-lane roundabouts, it's very, very important to have this consideration. So as you're trying to decrease the speed at multi-lane roundabouts, always ensure you avoid the path overlap that we talked about in the entrance and exit curves. So what are some of the ways you find that you can improve the roundabout speed? You can move the roundabout to the left. We've talked about this in lesson one. You can increase the inscribed diameter. We talked about this in the inscribed diameter lesson. So you find that you can increase the inscribed diameter to improve the speed. And also you can keep tweaking the entry and the entry curve, the exit curve, the exit width and the entry width. You can keep tweaking these. And you find that these are going to keep, as you keep altering all these different values. You alter the entry curve, you alter the position the way the roundabouts are aligned, inscribe diameter, you alter the roadway width, alter the way your split island is constructed. As you alter all these different parameters, you're altering the speed. But you must make sure you have speed consistency. So the power behind the roundabout design is you're altering all these so many different things as they give you different speeds to make sure your speed is consistent and safe. And this is where you find that nowadays um, roundabout design has been automated. I mean, you would have to change maybe, let's say you offset the roundabout to the right, you had to measure, is the entry angle safe? Is the new entry width okay? Are now my new speeds okay? Is my entry curve okay? I mean, let me give an example. If you have to do this over 60 times and you have to measure, then go and exit, punch in your radius, which gives you a speed. That's why um, nowadays we have tools that can automate this whole design process. It was very cumbersome in the olden days, but also it's very good to understand how to do it manually because not all roundabouts will work in civil 3D automatically. So open the drawing for the speed profiles. Um, I hope to see you there. In the next lesson, we are going to look at one of the final attributes of the geometric design, which is sight. 
visibility and sight distance.